Hi and welcome. I'm Kim Hogue, the owner of Heavenly Heart Creations in Bellingham, Mass. My paintings and designs have a refined primitive style. I have found the low Cornell fabric brushes to give me that perfect roundness and softness to help achieve the texture within my designs. Now, let me show you how. These fabric brushes come in a wide variety of sizes. However, I have found that my favorites are a 2, a 4, and a 6, and an 8. They were originally designed for the fabric painter. However, as a painter, I thought outside the box and said, hmm, these would be perfect for dry brushing, for scumbling, and for actually a soft base coat. It's really important that you carry no water in this brush doing this particular method. You want to squirt out some acrylic paint onto your palette. You want to take a brush of size that's going to fit within the area that you're going to work with. You want to dip your brush into the paint, the acrylic paint, and then you want to softly work it out in a circular motion on your palette. All you're trying to do is work that paint into the hairs and push it back and forth and then if you find you still have some paint just buff it across the paper towel. I might just pick up a little bit more. And then I'm going to softly apply pressure and as you notice, you don't get any outside ridges. And I'm just going to softly and quickly fill in my letters till I have the whole entire letter fully loaded. You will notice the difference as I'm working on this in comparison to what you see here on the candy cane. It's much more opaque here. It just gives you a better use of paint and then just quickly fill that in like such. Now, what I am going to do is, same process, load your brush, buff it out. Once again, no water. You have to keep these brushes absolutely dry. Starting at the top, apply pressure, and then as you work towards that next hill, lift up on the pressure. See how soft? Gives you that nice, icy look to your snow. Always work your brush parallel to the surface as you are working. Please do not come up because this is what will happen. You're going to get those nice little ping pong balls as you start working. It's like those cheeks you want to put on a doll like you see here. You notice it's nice soft. If I was to come in you'll get this a ping pong ball to the look. Now if you notice I've also taken this and I've dry brushed my shading, created my pleats with a tint of color to give that aged antique look to her dress. You can come in and apply pressure with the red paint, create the rind of the watermelon, the green area in here. I have also dry brushed to create my highlights on her dress, buffing back and forth, buffing back and forth. Anytime you find that you might have a lot of paint, always remember you can always scrape it across your paper towel and then just come back in totally on your surface. But remember, parallel to your surface at all times. If you come up, you're going to get a ping pong ball effect. You can add detail and then you can always come back in and redefine your highlights. After you have completed your uh, entire painting, it's really important you need to get this paint out of uh, the brushes. A lot of times people will say to me during class time, um, may I rinse my brush? I say absolutely not, but then that comes into the fact that you should have several brushes on hand as you are painting because the price point of these brushes are not costly. So it's better to have a few in hand, always one drying off the side, pick one up, you can go to your surface this way, you know you'll always achieve a soft and wonderful look. After your end of painting, rinse your brush out in a paper towel. You can clean it with your best uh, brush cleaner that you have, and then you'll be ready and set to go for your